Hi, Ben here, and we're down the field. We're just enjoying a little bit of this spring weather that we're getting at the moment. I've got my trusty rucksack on, and I've got a few bits and pieces that I want to take with me when I'm hitting the trail. We get a few people ask us, though, if you're out and about and you've got your trusty pocket knife, or your Swiss Army knife, and you realise that it's lost its edge, how do you actually sharpen it when you're out in the field? So we brought a few bits and pieces with us, so let's show you how we'd go about doing it. So when I'm out and about, I normally obviously have my pen knife with me and a few other cutting tools, but what I like to carry in my rucksack is one of our carving tool sharpening kits. This is my sort of used and abused one, so it's obviously a bit dirty now, but inside the bag, the carving kit consists of one piece of wood with our sandpaper around it, and obviously a matching one that's our strop. And then I've also got in here my spare sandpaper if I need it, different grits. And then I've also got things to look after my tools as well. So I've got my camellia oil and I've got my tourmac paste. So this is great for keeping the edge on pretty much all the tools that I'll be carrying, whether it be my pocket knife, whether it be my woodlander, whether it be my hook knife. Obviously these have got radiused edges on there so I can do curved tools as well. The beauty of the carving tool sharpening kit like this is it's incredibly light. There's no sort of fear of me breaking this because they're pieces of wood. If I have it in my rucksack and I drop my rucksack I'm not going to break any stones, water stones or ceramic stones and things like that. And it's really lightweight and it will just slide into my rucksack normally in the sort of the, the uh, internal frame of my rucksack that works great keeps it out of the way and to be honest I've made more friends by giving people their sort of carving tool sharpening kit when I've sort of shown them how to sharpen stuff and they go wow that's amazing you've given them the skills and the means to actually put an edge back on their tools so this is the simple little setup that will work pretty much in any environment and pretty much for any cutting tool so Let's show you how we go about putting that edge back on this Swiss Army knife. So this Swiss Army knife I've actually had since I was about 16. So I actually bought this from the local fishing tackle shop and it's been on lots of camping trips with me. So this is probably the most sort of popular knife that you'll see when you're out in the woods. So how do you go about putting an edge back on it? Well, the biggest problem when it comes to pocket knives or Swiss Army knives is that they have what we call a primary grind which is the main section of the blade and then we have what we call the secondary bevel that's the actual cutting edge the sharpening bit now the angle itself is normally about 12 to 13 degrees but because it's such a narrow bevel it's very difficult to sort of find that angle and maintain it so when you're learning to help your brain sort of learn the correct angle I would suggest that you use something like this so this is just a very simple little wooden block that I've actually cut and ground to a 13 degree angle and I normally keep that in my sharpening kit and you can choose one of these if you want to when you buy one of our sharpening kits but the beauty of that is that's going to help us find that angle when it comes to the sharpening so it's going to help us learn the correct position to hold our knife in so that simple little wooden wedge is going to make a big difference now this blade itself has been ground over the years but obviously it's going to work the same whether it's a brand new knife or whether it's a, an old 20 year old Swiss Army knife so let's show you how we go about putting an edge on it. So the first thing to do when it comes to sharpening is actually look at the edge itself. If you've got a very damaged tool or a very blunt tool you'll see lots of light bouncing off the cutting edge. This isn't looking too bad but I can just feel that it's just lost a little bit of its keen edge. So I'm only going to use a very fine piece of sandpaper. Obviously if you've got lots of material and lots of nicks to remove from the blade then you're going to want to wrap the coarser grades of paper onto your sharpening stick. This is the finest, this is 1200 grit, so it's pretty fine paper. It's not going to remove a massive amount of steel but it's going to put a really nice edge on there. So because we're going to use our little angled block I found that the easiest way to hold that in place is actually slip it under one of the little rubber bands at the end, or in fact let's slip it right underneath. That will help tension the sandpaper as well and that's going to be our reference point. Now the only disadvantage of using sandpaper as a sharpening medium is that we can't push the knife or the tool into the sandpaper. We can only draw it away from the cutting edge. So use your little angled chock, lay the whole blade against the, the block itself and that will give you that, that angle. 
Now, like I say, I can't draw straight into the sandpaper, so I'm then gonna maintain that angle, lock this wrist that's holding the knife, and then I'm gonna come down the piece of sandpaper, and I'm gonna draw away from the cutting edge, just like so. Now, what you'll find is when you get towards the belly and the tip of the knife, you're gonna to have to lift this backhand ever so slightly to make sure that that bevel still makes contact with the, with the sandpaper itself. So every now and again, you can just sort of lay it back on that block until you get that correct angle and then continue sharpening. Now, obviously that's only doing one side of the knife. So do that a few times, like so. And then to do the other side, I normally flip it round just so that it's a bit easier and then get that angle and then this time we're going to draw it away from the cutting edge on this side and you'll see that when I come to that belly and that tip this hand really lifts quite heavily in order for that bevel to keep in contact. Now if you wanted to, if you're struggling to see where you're removing material from you can always use the classic marker pen and put a little bit of pen on that very small bevel it will help you a little bit, but because it's such a narrow bevel, it's, it's really important that you try and learn that correct angle and lock that wrist in, in position. Now, you have got to be a little bit careful when it comes to slip joints. If, you, if your pocket knife doesn't have a lock on it and it's one of these slip joints, as you're drawing backwards, there is a tendency if you push too hard that it can fold on your fingers. So be aware of that when you're doing it. Now, after a few passes on that side, what I find is the easiest way to just get rid of that burr is just to alternate. So one stroke on one side, one stroke on the other. And I'm easing off the pressure at this stage as well. Just like so. And then we'll have a quick look down the cutting edge. Now, at that stage, if you still could see light or some nick still in, in the actual cutting edge of your knife, you need to continue that process. If you've been using a very coarse grade of paper to remove material, then obviously you need to swap over the grade of paper and go through the grits until you get a really nice fine edge. But looking at it, I'm pretty much happy that I can't see any light bouncing off the edge itself. There's a very slight burr on there, which would be difficult to remove with the sandpaper itself. So let's show you how we'd remove that burr. So coming straight off the sandpaper would be plenty sharp enough for general purpose, but to make it really sharp and to help maintain that edge for longer, we're going to use a strop. So a strop can be anything from your belt to a piece of wood. This is actually a piece of wood with a bit of very soft leather wrapped around it, which we've applied some Tormek paste to, which is a very, very fine grit in, in a paste form that we can apply to the leather and that's going to work really effectively for polishing the edge and removing any burr that might be left on there. So you could, if you wanted to, use that same little chock just to make sure that you get the correct angle. It's a little bit more forgiving when it comes to stropping, so as long as you're holding it roughly at the right angle, you'll find that it will work just fine. Now the leather itself gives ever so slightly as you apply the pressure, which will help ever so slightly round the edge which will help remove that burr and it will actually make that cutting edge stay sharper for longer as well it sort of reinforces the edge a little bit so a few passes on one side a few passes on the other and then it helps if you alternate the strokes and as you get closer to the finished job just ease the pressure off ever so slightly until you're happy that you've removed that burr if you then check it, just run your finger off the edge, make sure you can't feel anything sort of catching your skin on both sides, and then have another little look down the cutting edge, and you can see that that leather and the honing paste really put a real nice shine on that knife. Now to test for sharpness, definitely don't just run your thumb down it, but if you just touch the edge you can just feel it bite into your skin or you can test it just by putting it on your thumbnail at a very acute angle and if it bites in you know it's pretty much sharp. Obviously the good test that you can do to see if it's really sharp, see if there's any burr hanging on there is just use a piece of paper and just see if it slides through the paper without any effort at all. So that's got a real nice sharp edge on that pen knife now. 
Now obviously this particular pen knife is made from stainless steel so you haven't got to worry too much about corrosion but if you were using a carbon steel tool you could apply a little bit of camellia oil on there just to protect it. Now obviously that is how we sharpen a pen knife like that that's got this small secondary bevel. If you were going to be sharpening something that's got a different grind on it like one of our nomads which has got a scandy grind which has got this much wider bevel itself you can use exactly the same technique but you won't need to use that little bit of wood because when you lay that onto the block itself you'll be able to feel that correct angle that wide scandy grind is is a sort of advantage when it comes to sharpening so we've shown you how to sharpen a pen knife with the carving tool sharpening set but obviously you can sharpen your normal scandy grind knives you can also use it for sharpening your axes and you can also use it for sharpening any big cutting tools like bill hooks or even parangs, something like that. So that's how we put an edge back on our pen knife when we're literally out in the field. We were using one of our carving tool sharpening kits for sharpening this particular knife. But if you want to see other tools being sharpened with different methods, then please check out our channel and hope that helps you keep your pen knife razor sharp. So thanks for watching.